Doctor, in your experience, are, are some cancers just a lot tougher to treat than others? And, and which ones would that be if that's the case? Although pancreatic cancer is known widely as mm -hmm. the most aggressive of cancer, actually in my opinion, having been treating cancer patients for 25 years, there's a type of leukemia called acute myelocytic leukemia that I think is the most aggressive of all cancers. It's not as common. Pancreatic cancer is the fourth leading cause of cancer death. It's estimated I think 43,000 Americans died last year from pancreatic. Acute myelocytic leukemia is very rare. There might be a couple thousand cases a year. It's so deadly that in the old days, usually within four weeks of diagnosis, you were dead. Now, pancreatic cancer, you might live three to six months. Um, and some people, like Loretta Young, the actress, she died. I think 10 days after a diagnosis. But usually pancreatic cancer patients can live three to six months even without treatment. Acute myelocytic leukemia, nobody lives three to six months without treatment. They can be gone in four weeks. We get calls, although it's not, not a common disease, so we don't get a lot of calls. We'll get calls from people that were just diagnosed and want to come see us. They don't even have the time to get into our office. You know, they lose a week in travel and we're booked. They can be dead, so we tell them, you've got to get chemo and get stabilized. So acute myelocytic leukemia, to answer your question, to me is the most aggressive cancer. And those patients, we insist that they get chemo just to stop it. Usually chemo will not cure it, but it will slow it down so then they can come see us and get on the program. Mm. So some cancers are really very aggressive. That's the worst. Breast cancer, far more indolent. I mean, even metastatic disease. I mean, ultimately in the standard world, they die, women die from breast cancer once it's stage four, which is the worst. But they can live two or three years. With acute myelocytic chemo, you've got to get moving right away. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, then, what, what do you find you have more success with in terms of types of cancers? We have the, the greatest success, and this isn't trying to be a, give you a funny answer, the patients that do it. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of cancer. Like today, I presented a whole series of patients with advanced pancreatic cancer that are alive 1, 30 years, uh, some of them 10, 15 years out. And the difference between them and some patients who may not have done as well is the compliance. So really, it's, mm. it's a question of compliance. It doesn't matter how aggressive the cancer is. It really depends on the... Sometimes the patients can't do it. They're just too sick. We try. They, they try. We're trying to be compassionate to help them. They can't do it. They're just too sick. But most of our patients comply. We have studied the patients who fail. And usually, it doesn't depend on the cancer. It depends on the compliance. There are times when it's just not going to work. The tum tumors are too advanced. You can't break it down fast enough. But we've studied, or went through a several year period where we pulled out all the patients that had failed. Most of them had succeeded, but pulled out the group that didn't. And usually it was a compliance issue. It sounds like you're blaming the patient, but sometimes they couldn't do it. They're too mm -hmm. sick. But there are times when you can't break the down, the, down the cancer fast enough. We've also lost patients um, because of previous, I'm not trying to be critical of previous therapy, but I had a patient, a young woman, 24 years old with brain cancer, where they put radiation, it was an experimental protocol that they eventually shut down because everyone died put pellets of radiation into her brain, and she had tumors. It didn't cure her cancer. It was an experimental protocol. Her tumors went away. Two and a half years later, she woke up one day, had a seizure, and died, and did an autopsy. And what had happened is the pellets were still in her brain, and her brain had gelled from the radiation. It happened. Mm. Sometimes radiation effect can be gradual, and all of a sudden, you hit a threshold, and everything goes wrong. And that's what happened to her. And she just woke up one day, had a seizure, and died. And the, it wasn't from cancer. It was from the radiation pellets, which they stopped doing because it didn't work. Mm. All it did is kill people. So sometimes we lose patients because of prior therapy. But usually it's a compliance issue. Usually success doesn't so much depend upon the type of cancer, but more on the compliance of the patient. Mm -hmm.